After spending a month in Lisbon, Portugal, I was off to another destination by the sea, the town of Cotor in Montenegro, also known as Cerna Gora, meaning Black Mountain. A small country in the Balkans, Montenegro became independent in 2006 after being part of Yugoslavia post-World War I. It is not as well known as its neighbor Croatia, but is quickly becoming a major draw for tourists due to its incredible natural beauty. To get to Kotor, the plan was to fly to Croatia, then take a bus across the border. Except I made a mistake as soon as I landed in Dubrovnik. We landed at 3.20 and my bus is, is until 5.30. And so I sit myself down and I'm just like, oh, I have like a whole hour to waste over here. I waited until five o'clock to go to the desk and, and be like, where am I supposed to wait for this bus? And the guy's eyes like visibly widen. He's like, oh, the bus to Kotor like leaves from Dubrovnik. And I'm like confused for a moment, but I thought it was from the airport. And he's like, no, it's from the like center, which makes sense. I just was not thinking. And so I was like, okay, well, how do I get there? And how long does it take? He says, you could take the shuttle bus, you could take a taxi, um, and it takes 25 minutes. And I'm like, that's really tight. He's like, you can ask the lady across. So there's a, the shuttle bus desk is like right across from his desk. And so I walk over to her and I'm like, when's the next shuttle bus? And she's like, it's leaving right now. And I'm like, well, maybe, maybe I'll make it because like maybe the bus will be like a few minutes late. But I quickly realized that I wouldn't make it in time as the shuttle bus needed to make a stop in the old town before arriving at the bus terminal. I just enjoyed the views. It was stunning and it was sunset. I get to the bus terminal and I ask the ticket lady and I'm like, is there another bus to Kotor today? And she's like, Nope, the next one is at 7.15 a.m. the next morning. I'm like, okay, so is there somewhere I can stay for the night that's like nearby? And she says, just wait a minute. And then she like reaches into this box over here and it's like a little, she's got, she pulls out a little stack of small like note papers and they all have like different numbers written on it. And then she like flips through and then she calls one of them. And then she tells me, just wait, she's coming over now. And then I see this older lady just kind of ambling over. She's like, hello, 20 euros a night, is that okay? I'll take it. Um, so then we just like walk back across the street and it's her apartment and she clearly has, like she lives there and then she has like guest rooms above. This would do just fine. After dropping off my things, I headed downstairs to find some dinner. I bought another ticket and I made it out to the bus. So then it's about two hours drive and it has to cross the border from Croatia into Montenegro. My excitement grew as I watched the Bay of Kotor come into view. I was finally about to reach my destination. I booked a month's stay at this Airbnb right in the middle of the old town. It was newly renovated inside and very spacious. The Airbnb hosts own the restaurant downstairs called Ombra. So that's where I had my first meal in Kotor. 
Black risotto is a classic dish found along the Adriatic coastline. Also known as cuttlefish risotto, it gets its color from the cuttlefish ink. KOTOR is tucked away in the Bay of KOTOR and fortified by walls put up during Venetian rule from 1420 to 1797. The mountains enveloping the town make for stunning scenery, though it also means less direct sunlight in the wintertime. Now a UNESCO World Heritage Site, the number of tourists visiting KOTOR have been increasing in the last 20 years, many of whom come through by cruise ship. So the biggest ship I've seen was a princess ship and it was so big it couldn't even dock at the port. It had to be in the middle of the bay. Strolling the winding streets of KOTOR is best enjoyed in between cruise ship dockings. Luckily, I visited during the off season and was able to have a number of quiet days to explore the town. You'll find plenty of restaurants, cafes, souvenir shops, and churches to visit. While the Venetians have long since left KOTOR, reminders of their presence remain not only in the architecture, but in the language, as the locals often use ciao as an informal greeting. You'll also easily find Italian menu offerings like pizza and pasta. Now we can't talk about KOTOR without talking about the cats. There are cats everywhere. It's not clear what the origin story of the cats of KOTOR is, but it's possible they were useful for pest control in the town back in the day. Nowadays, these free-roaming felines are a beloved symbol of good luck and are well looked after by the locals. There's been a couple places where this seems to be like a resident cat. It's like this one cafe that I go to, there's always a cat sitting on one of the chairs just napping. Venturing just outside the gates of the old town, you'll find the beautiful Bay of Kotor and a lovely place to walk or relax at one of the many restaurant patios. There's even a tiny aquarium along the way. I was worried that my visit to KOTOR in November would coincide with the rainy season, but I think that I got really lucky. The weather's like very pleasant, mild. To me, it was like, felt like summer still. It was probably not as hot as their actual summer, but it was still like high 20s. So it was, it was like that for like three-ish weeks. In the last week, it's been raining the entire time and it's been like slightly under 20 degrees, but um, that's still like not very cold. It's just wet. There was one night that there was a thunderstorm and the lightning was like going wild outside.
Just outside KOTOR Old Town's main gate is a farmer's market, busiest on Saturday mornings as that is when the farmers from out of town come in as well. There are fruits and vegetables, fish, cheese, meat, honey, and more. Montenegro's cuisine has been influenced by neighboring countries and varies regionally. Kotor, being along the coastline, offers plenty of seafood as well as dishes with Italian influence. I don't think I've ever eaten so much prosciutto in a month. It's often served for breakfast along with cheese. For pastries, I would go to a bakery just outside of the Old Town Gates called Pecara AS, where I got some birek, a flaky pastry with fillings like meat or cheese, Palachinka is a crepe-like pancake treat you can get at stalls on the street. This one was just outside the old town, and I got one with euro cream, ground peanuts, and sugar in it. If you like meat, I highly recommend Barbecue Tanga, located outside the old town and popular with the locals. When you step inside, you'll see all of these raw meats marinating at the counter, ready to be cooked. There's also a lovely shaded patio behind the restaurant to sit at. I ordered a mixed meat platter which included chicken, steak, sausage, and some sides. I was like full for the entire day, but it was very good. So I definitely recommend that place. And there's also something called chibapi. It's like minced meat. And then they kind of shape it into like a little sausage shape and then they grill it. I had it like as a pita sandwich type thing. And then they put like five pieces of chibapi in there. And that was really good. Within the old town, Cesaritza was one of my favorite restaurants. There I had thick fish soup and sea bass, which was incredibly fresh. Conoba Scala Santa was another great restaurant in the old town, where I went for lunch. I had the scampi buzara. Scampi means shrimp, and buzara refers to a specific method of cooking seafood popular in this region. Remember how I said there was a restaurant below my Airbnb? There was always a game of chess in progress at Ombra, and it had a really cute outdoor space that was quiet and tucked away from the busiest spots in Old Town. I really enjoyed having the Priganitsa there for breakfast, fried dough balls served with honey and cheese, and of course, you can't forget the Turkish coffee. and actually found out like my second time eating there that I get a 15% discount for staying in one of the Airbnbs. So all the Airbnb guests get a 15% discount at the restaurant, which is really nice discount. So I've eaten there like many times. Rakia is a fruit brandy popular in the Balkans. You can find it in many flavors, plum being one of the most common. You might not think of Montenegro when you think of wine, but you should. There are wines made with grapes unique to Montenegro, including Vranac for red wines and Krestac for white wines. Apparently, the largest vineyard in Europe is here in Montenegro. So it's a small country, but it has a lot to offer. Stay tuned for part two in my Montenegro series, where I take a speedboat tour and go on a hike right outside the old town. I actually just want to show you what I've been doing for the water situation. So here, I think the tap water is technically safe to drink, um, but just for extra precautions, like instead of going to buy um, a whole ton of bottled water, which would be a lot if I'm staying here for like, you know, a month. What I brought is a Grail bottle and it can like, technically this is, this one's like good enough to use like, in the outdoors, so it should be fine for like the sink. Um, it's not very 
big. It doesn't fit a lot of water in it. But what I've actually been doing is I I end up like buying like one bottle anyway. Um, and then when that's empty, I'll just like filter water into here and then pour it into here because this is actually kind of heavy. So this is a lot lighter to like carry around with me. Um, so. basically like this. So you fill the water into here up to this line and then this is the filter um, and then you just like push it down.